Over the past 40 years, treatment for HIV AIDS has evolved. What was once a deadly and mysterious virus is now managed with antiretroviral therapy, allowing people living with HIV to live long and healthy lives. Prevention methods have also advanced from daily oral prep to new options like lenecapavil, a long-acting injectable administered just twice a year. Yet, despite these challenges remain, adherence to treatment is still a barrier for many and new infections continue to emerge annually. Uganda has made major strides, but the burden remains high. An estimated 1.5 million Ugandans are living with HIV with a majority aged 15 and above. Dr. Betty Mwesigwa, a clinical researcher, says one of the main reasons a cure has not been found is the reservoirs. So the problem with HIV is uh, once it gets into the body, it incorporates itself into the body cells and then the body cells are able to, to, to live with it. And, but after even incorporating, it goes and hides into places where the normal body immune system cannot find it or find it easily. So it is lying there, sleeping, especially for people who are on treatment, it is lying somewhere, waiting for that treatment to go away, and then it wakes up. But the places where HIV hides are places deep in the body that are difficult to get to without being invasive. Researchers around the world are exploring a number of approaches to cure HIV, including moves that would keep the virus permanently suppressed without the need for ongoing treatment. Another approach is to eliminate the virus from the body entirely, which they say is difficult. So the other strategies out there include the kill and the kick and kill or, or the shock and kill. Some people have called it shock and kill. Uh, what happens here is uh, you get a product that will be able to awaken the sleeping virus from in those reservoirs and, and then make it available for other agents to kill it. Uganda is contributing towards HIV cure research through institutions like the Macquarie University Walter Reed Project, which is conducting studies involving both HIV positive and HIV negative individuals. I'm trying to understand the dynamics of the virus or the dynamics of the people themselves who have HIV. Comparing it to those who don't have HIV, what can we learn that we can be, you know, that can, we can use to develop the products we need? So different people across the globe are doing so many things and they are at different stages. Some are in the lab. We will not stop going to the lab because we knew new ideas have to be generated because we don't know if the ones we have will work. Nine people worldwide have been cured of HIV through bone marrow transplant. According to the Joint Clinical Research Center, these individuals were HIV positive but also had blood cancers which are treatable through bone marrow transplant. Providing the bone marrow transplant, the donors that they used had cells that are resistant to HIV and eventually these uh, recipients of these cells also developed cells in their body that are resistant to HIV and this led to a cure. There are only a few patients or only a few people in the world that have these cells that are resistant to HIV, about 2%. But this process is complicated and risky. What is not mentioned that many people who have had the cancer and HIV and had cell uh, transplant, 40% died. Nobody says that. So this, also it's very complicated, it can't be scaled up. Scientists are now trying to replicate the same effect through gene therapy, which edits DNA to either make cells resistant to HIV or enable them to target and destroy the virus without impacting the rest of the body. We've identified the barriers to having gene therapy in Uganda and Sub-Saharan Africa all generally low and middle income countries and we are addressing these barriers concurrently step by step to ensure that we have the first gene therapy trial at JCRC in Uganda, uh, the first also in sub-Saharan Africa. If you talk about prevention and cure, they are ongoing. But once we have uh, a functional cure, it's a, a one-off expenditure. So we are not saying that we don't need to invest in prevention and treatment. They are equally important. No, but at Kunda, NTV News.